Hello everyone, I am Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Legacy Evolution Animated Prowl. This is a new legacy figure that is based off of the design of Transformers Animated well, Prowl. Though this doesn't feel like that character. I will freely admit that the overall aesthetic is pretty good, and it works as a Transformer, though it is lacking that animated styling from Derek J. Wyatt. Head Sculpt is good and is reminiscent of that Prowl character, but this isn't animated Prowl. This is a version or a... it's not even a version, it's a character. It's a... it's an attempt to try and fit the Transformers animated style into the Legacy line. So, like some of the Prime Universe figures before it, I don't think Hasbro has completely nailed it. And let's face it, the Derek J. Wyatt art isn't going to fit here. I mean, this is not Prowl from Animated. It's stylized like that character, but this isn't him. So I'm going to go off the basis of this being an alternate universe animated Prowl, because that's the only way this, th this makes sense to me. Posability of the figure is quite good. Head is on a ball joint and can look up and down and swivel side to side. Swivels in the shoulders, followed by hinges, then swivels at the upper arm, bend at the elbows, no fist articulation, unfortunately. There is torso articulation. Legs kick kick forward and back, though my legs, or the legs on my figure, very, very tight, like disturbingly so, can kick out on pseudo ratchets. It's odd. Both of the legs have one, two clicks, but then nothing after that. It's very strange. Thigh swivel, bend at the knee is quite a bit, and then there is an ankle rot swivel for the transformation, and then there's a ball joint at the ankle. And this other swivel is more like a shin swivel, we'll say, or a hinge, a, sh a, sh a shin hinge, if you will. One of the only figures in the Legacy line not to have a keister hole for a stand. In robot mode, the motorcycle seat is meant to be kept down, but you can flip it up to get it out of the way, because if it's left down and you try to move the torso, it's going to hit it. So you could just leave it up. And oddly, this is ratcheted. The figure comes with two accessories that mount on the outside of its legs, and they are the little shurikens, ninja shurikens, which actually I like quite a bit. They should auto-transform, but I can never get them to, because I think the gearing on mine are slightly stripped, so I could get it to a point, and then it doesn't want to do it anymore. So I end up having to just transform it manually. Here, I got the gearing to work on this one, so you just turn them in opposite directions, the top and the bottom, and the little blades flip out. It's neat. The blades fit neatly into Prowl's hands, and they are held pretty well, though if you start shaking the figure, they are going to fall out eventually. I mean, yeah, it's not the tightest held thing in the world, but it does stay put when you want it to. I love the fact that if you didn't have prior knowledge, you would not probably have guessed that these are weapons, and they're held in very snugly, and they're not going to pop out super easily. I love the weapon storage on this thing. I just wish it came with maybe a gun or something that could be stored on the back, but I'm, I'm fine with just shurikens. It'll work. Size comparison time. Legacy Kickback. Generation Selects Magnificus. Studio Series 100 Bumblebee. Legacy Shrapnel. Legacy Crash Bar. And Legacy Crosscut. As you can see, it scales with the recently released Legacy line. So let's go ahead and get into the transformation. Prowl's transformation is a bit finicky. To start off with, put the arms straight out and fold up the fists into the forearms. I like to push the backpack down just a little bit so that we can grab the head and pull it up and straight up and point it to the sky like that. Then take the entire torso and turn it to the side so that the windscreen for the motorcycle mode is pointing to the left side of the figure. Then take these backpack sections and flip them all the way down, and then that will allow you to then flip up the chest and just get that over the head. And you kind of have to push it over and then pull it up like that and just kind of leave it as is, when, whenever I do that, I do unhinge the, the chest. So you can fold that down and then turn the arms so that the inside of the shoulders are pointing to the back and then grab those whole sections and fold them back and put the arms together, or the, I should say the, the forearms together. 
and then drop the seat in place like so. What I end up doing most of the time is having to pull the head down a bit, push it forward, and then put it back up. Because you can see, that's the back of the head right there. It becomes the gauge cluster for the, for the motorcycle mode. I like that. That's a nice touch. Turn the figure so that you are looking at the butt plug and the front of the motorcycle mode is pointing to, towards your left. Now, for the legs, you're going to take the figure's left leg and turn it so you see the mushroom peg. Then you're going to take the right leg and turn it in the opposite direction so you see the, well, the gap. And you're going to have the star pointed towards you. Then you could push the rear leg out and bend it at the knee. And it is supposed to peg in up here, right where my finger is, but I have not found a reliable way to get that to peg in. The pegs for the arms just are a little bit too loose, and this just kind of sits there. It doesn't actually fully peg into place. Once you have it sat there, grab the ankle and rotate that whole section to the back of the leg and fold the foot down until it's the bottom of the foot is touching the, well, taint. For the front of the bike mode, we're going to do something similar, but first grab the handlebars and flip them all the way around, and then grab the si front sides of the vehicle mode and flip them around, and they will peg into place first on the inside of the shoulders. There's a little peg there, or a little slot there, and then on the foot of the other, of the one that we just transformed. What I like to do is grab the kickstand and fold it out now, because good luck trying to get it out once it's fully transformed. So you see there's a peg there, get that pegged in. So then on the other side, do the same thing. Grab it, get it slotted into place, and then peg it in. Now, for the front wheel, we are going to rotate this up and the bottom of the foot will fill in this section here. I don't have any suggestions for you on the best way to do this. It's just kind of trial and error. I like to push it down a little bit and then slide it up from underneath, but that doesn't always work. So you just have to futz with it a bit and maybe even manhandle it in order to get it in. I'll do that off camera. I, like I said, I don't really have any suggestions for you. It's just good luck. And here is the motorcycle mode, all transformed up into, well, it's a bit rough. Not going to lie. There's some things to like about it. I love the color. I think it works well. It's definitely a motorcycle. But I mean, come on. Look at all these gaps. I mean, that's big enough to drive a Titan Master through. Okay, parts of a Titan Master, not the whole thing. I get what they're going for, but somehow the original figure pulled off the bike mode way better than this one has. And also the kickstand just sucks. It's somehow not long enough. Like, it's down as long as you don't touch... See? As long as you don't touch it, you get it stable, and then you leave it alone. It won't move until you blow on it. Now, in terms of other bikes, we need to take a look at Crash Bar from Legacy, and we need to take a look at RC's mold, but I'm going to use Road Rocket because I just like the coloring better. Prow scales just in between the two, with Cro Crash Bar being a little bit longer and then Road Rocket being a little bit shorter. So it's very interesting because you've got what is literally a crotch rocket, that's what the sports bikes are called, and then you've got this that's a sport bike, but it's more the size of a cruiser, which is weird, but they're all still sports bikes, technically. Now, the only other bike transformer I have out is Voyager class Rekgar, and Rekgar's just a better toy, I think. I, I think it is. I'd be really curious to see what improvements could be made with this guy if it was bigger. Another figure to compare it to is Ironhide from the Studio Series. They're both deluxe class figures, but you could get an idea on the different size, size of the alt modes. Yeah, they're roughly the same size, but there's a lot more mass with Ironhide than there is with Prowl. But I'm not saying that this is a bad figure. 
I'm just not a fan of it. I'll be honest, I'm torn with this figure. It's not a bad figure. Yes, it has some minor flaws, but it's not bad by any stretch. If they had somehow gone with a different character, maybe? The long and short of it is, this does not feel like animated Prowl to me. And that is specifically because of the design. It's just not animated. I mean, again, it's not bad. I, I do like it, but I, I don't know. It, I, I just don't know. It's so weird. Um, just so weird. Ugh. Oops. Uh, so, uh, I suggest going over and watching um, Gavin's review over at TRDQ. I think he managed to convey, I think, the same thing that I'm feeling with this Prowl figure that he is. And, again, if this was a different figure, if this was painted white and called, like, Streetwise or called something else other than animated Prowl, I think I would be feeling a lot different. It's a good figure, but it's just not the figure that we expect it to be. Let me know what you think of Prowl down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bolt Matrix, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.